Hi, today we are going to talk about mock forms, how to request access and how to create one. So the first thing that you will do is go to the Student Affairs IT website, which is uh, student affairs dash SAIT or slash SAIT rather, and then you'll just go to request and down on this drop down to mock form permissions request. So it's a short little form, just your net ID, your email, confirm your staff and hit submit and SAIT should get back to you pretty quickly with your access. They will send you an email that should have a link uh, and will probably also ask you what forms you would like access to. Uh, you may know that, but you may not. And if you don't, that's fine. You can always request that from me down the line. Um, but so go ahead and once you get that, you should be good to go. One thing you'll need to do to access that site, however, is go to your VPN network. So I'm going to go to my network preferences and I'm going to click on my Northwestern VPN and hit connect. If you do not have uh, this VPN, you can contact uh, uh, SAIT and they can get you access to that if you don't have it. But if you have a Northwestern computer, you should have it. All right, so I'm connected. I'm going to go ahead and get out of this. And then the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go to the link that they're going to send you, which is forms.dosa.northwestern.edu. And we're going to, you probably won't have anything here because you don't have a form yet unless you've um, requested access to forms that already exist. So what I'm going to do is we're going to just go straight to create a new form. All you need to do is click in here and title your form. So we are going to call this um, Dillo Day Access. And you have a form description here you can add, which is whatever you want it to be. Um, how to get in to Dillo Day. So there, we'll, we'll just leave it, but you don't have to have anything there. You can just erase it. Uh, one thing to note on this field, which is the form properties, is this thing at the bottom where it says success, your submission has been saved. So I'm going to go into this a little bit more, but I wanted to show this to you. If you want your user to have a receipt of their submission, this is where you would put the message they would get. This will be your default if you don't put anything there, but you can put something specific such as someone from our department will get back to you within 24 hours or whatever you want this to say. Um, but if you don't say anything, this is what it will come up if they get it. Um, but I will go into that in a second. Uh, once you figure this out, we're all done. We can go to add a field. And this is just kind of, you know, fun and easy to play with depending on your content. Uh, the first thing you'll use probably is a name, just drag and drop. You can click on that field and here you can change the name. So you can say, let's say student, we want specific students to fill this out and that's all. So that'll help clarify. Um, you can uh, make it required. If you click on this, it'll give a little red asterisk and the person will have to fill that out. Um, guidelines for users, you can say um, user must be a student. And when they roll over this, that will pop up, but you don't have to have anything there. So we're cool there. Let's go to add a field again. And this is where email comes in handy. You know, obviously you don't have to have an email address in here, but if you want the user to have a receipt of their submission, then this is important to have. So we want to, let's say we specify Northwestern email instead of like their Google or personal email. Uh, again, you can make it required if you don't have to. And again, guidelines, you know, please use Northwestern email only. All right, so now after this, go back to add a field and you can put in an address, you can put in their phone number, any of that kind of stuff. Um, one thing that comes in handy sometimes if you have a a longer form that has sections to it is section breaks. So I'm going to show you an example of this real quick in our student affairs snapshot form. Uh, this is what a form looks like when it's embedded into a website 
and I'll go into that more also as well. But when you see this, you'll see I've got this right here, the title and the content right here. This is all in Cascade in my web page, but my form is embedded here. And in the snapshot, we have several sections. We have an accolade section, we have announcements, we have features, and we have a week ahead. So the reason the section breaks are helpful is for the user to be able to just jump to what they need and not have to kind of go through all the details to figure it out. So let's go back to our mock form. So I'm not going to use any section breaks today, but if you wanted to, you could just put this in and click on it and put whatever title it is. And, it'll, and same thing, you can have a description if you need it, not if you don't. So I'm going to delete this because we don't need this today. So a lot of uh, forms, parts of the form that I use most often are drop down. So this is good if you've got a choice of days or events that they want to go to. So under my drop down, I click on it and over here I can just say, um, you know, date uh, of event. Let's pretend Dillo Day is four different days or three different days. So you can say June 1. June 2nd, June 3rd. You can delete one if you want, or you can add one if you want to add more. You can also, um, let's get rid of one and let's make this required. So they have to pick one. Uh, you can put in a choice limit. Um, usually the drop down is just one choice they're going to pick. If they want to have separate things, you can always use uh, check boxes. Check boxes are good also for uh, yes, no kind of questions. So uh, do you need a guest pass? And first can be yes, second can be no. This can be not sure. Uh, again, you can add one, you can subtract it. Uh, you can also give them a choice to put something else in there. So you can make it, you'll see over here, it says other, if I click on that. <clears throat> um, the next thing that I'll show you that I use often is um, a file upload. So if they have a, they have to upload their uh, photo, let's say, um, for their ID, let's, who knows, <laughs> or it can be a form if they had to fill out an essay form or something like that. This is where they can upload a PDF or a JPEG. So you can click on this and you can just put, let's just say we want them to put in a photo. And uh, again, you can make it required. Um, this is all pretty default here. You don't need to worry about this, um, but you can put in guidelines here. Must be a square format. Uh, and you can limit the file size under two megabytes, etc. So there's a lot you can do here. So, but for this, this is pretty much done. You can play with this and see all the different things that um, work for your content. And I'm always happy to help if you need ha help with that. So I'm going to go ahead and click save form and I'm finished. So it'll take me back to my dashboard. So now I want to go to theme. So you're going to see this drop down here and there may be a lot of things. What you want to do is just go up to student affairs. So you saw my student affairs embedded form before, and that already has the title and information about the form on the web page. Uh, but if you don't have that, if you want it to just be standalone uh, and not embedded into your site, standalone is going to include everything and make it look very Northwestern student affairs branded. So I'm going to hit save changes. And now let's take a look at it real quick. So I'm clicking on view and this is how to get, this is my form. So you'll see my little, this here, if I roll over, user must be a student, um, you know, whatever, please use Northwestern email only. So these little pop-ups happen, um, select files, submit. So one thing that's good to do is test this once you're done, but real quick, we're going to go back to the panel. So, notifications. How are you going to find out who's entering this? Where are these entries going to go to? So you want to click on send notification emails to my inbox and you're going to put in your email address. 
or you're going to also add other people. Um, so it'll go to several different people. So in this case, I'm going to see that Jim Roberts gets it as well. If you have like a just a general department email, you put a comma and just add that as well. And it will go this form anytime someone submits something, it will go to all of these emails to be, make sure that it's being seen. Um, here is where we have the email address for the person. So if you want them to get that receipt confirmation, uh, this is all you'll need to do is check this box. And that's pretty much it for that. You're going to save your settings. And when they get that receipt, they're going to get that message that I showed you earlier. So that right now is pretty much all you need to do this. Um, you can, if it's a timely event that happens maybe every year or every quarter, um, but has um, expiration dates of when, how long they can, um, you know, uh, submit, you can click disable at any time. And it's going to give you this message that will pop up on the form if they click on the link or on that web page. So you can change this. Um, for instance, our marketing communications form right now is closed. So this is our cascade page with all our information, but we normally have the form embedded here, but this is our message that it's now passed. So we can always go back into mock forms later and then reopen it back up again. So I can go ahead and just click this again and it will say enable. And then you can go back and edit and make any changes, update the dates, etc. Uh, and the last thing that's important are tags. Tags are really good, especially if you're going to have a lot of forms. Uh, so it helps if you don't remember the name of the form you created because it can get kind of hard to remember. So uh, I'm going to put, you know, the name of a department that I'm in. Uh, let's see, I'm going to put Dillo Day. So that way, if you don't remember or if you need help with a form and you need me to help you, and you don't remember the name of it, then it'll help me find it as well. If I know what the form is about, using these tags is really helpful. So that is your form. If we go back to your view, this URL right here is your link. So you can use this in an email, you can use it on social media to get people to come to fill out your form. So that is a uh, mock forms. If you have any questions, um, you know, again, you can play with it. If you run into any trouble or have questions, you can always contact me at jill-norton at northwestern.edu.